is the first meeting of the subcommittee of the finance, or is the subcommittee of the council, it's the standing committee of the council. Uh, right now, we still have not appointed uh, the members that are residents. Uh, by virtue of the charge that we have passed, uh, there will be four members who are residents. Uh, and we are counting as accepting applications for those at this time. Uh, I do want to point out, however, by the charter, those residents actually are not voting members, but advisory, and we welcome and look forward to that advice. Um, so that's a way of saying, if you have plan to apply or <coughs> have it, please go ahead and do so. So uh, with that, uh, we do have an agenda that was posted for today's meeting. I'll take the first item, which is the election of a chair and a vice chair. And I would like to place a nomination for the chair. Do I have a second? Is there any discussion on that? All those in favor? Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? And for vice chair, do you have a nomination? Uh, yes, I know. Kathy Shannon. Okay. I'd like to second that. All right, all those in favor? Okay. All right, unanimous. So we have our first two items. Um, are, who's taking minutes? Ah. <laughs> we all do different things, don't we? Yes, and we like to do it with this meeting. Oh, okay, fine. And, and you've just been given the job for this meeting. We can do it on a rotating basis. So I've dispensed with the first item on the agenda, and uh, I've more than Glad to move to my left and have you sit in the center. It doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, this fall on the table. Okay. But thank you. Uh, and thank my fellow council members uh, for your confidence. And uh, my, once again, the chair of a finance committee. Um, <laughs> having, having done that for the other finance committee for three years. Uh, <coughs> so the major topic obviously of discussion is to get into the question of capital projects and in particular uh, we were referred to an issue by the council as a whole um, it, that is to uh, make a recommendation regarding uh, a temporary bridge uh, as a part of the uh, project and other matters related to financing um, that were requested by the town manager for financing the entire station road project, regard uh, whether or not we, um, the council ultimately has the bridge, temporary bridge um, included. Um, I just wanted to say also for everybody's not um, information here, because it has not been posted, when we did um, a survey of this group, as to when we would be available. We actually identified two dates so that if we, because we did not necessarily anticipate that we could conclude the discussion um, in one single meeting, we may identify information or get beyond the time that's allotted. So the second meeting that we have identified is January 22nd from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m and the first floor conference room at Town Hall has been reserved um, by our staff. Um, so uh, again, it's January 22nd, 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. in the first floor conference room at Town Hall. Uh, so uh, the way we, I, I had suggested structuring this after having um, surveyed everybody to make sure that we had the uh, items on the agenda that needed to be there is to start by doing um, a, a little bit of follow-up um, on, on this morning presentation. Um, for those of you in the public who are not there, um, we've been doing a series of orientation programs um, which the town manager has organized with staff coming in and making presentations to us about uh, the work in their departments and what we need to know. And this morning, fortuitously, uh, uh, it was ended up being scheduled that the finance department was there. 
So the um, there was a presentation that was made that covered part of the question of how the budget is um, structured, because I wanted to make sure that um, the finance committee as a group understood the question that one of our members asked um, during the discussion is where um, capital is included and how decisions get made about capital. So um, Sonia has uh, provided um, or is prepared to provide us with copies of something that was on the screen. I think I have my copy if we don't have enough, so I'll just pull it out. Um, this was um, the item that was uh, on the screen, and I wanted to um, make sure that for the finance committee that we actually have a physical copy for each of you today, which is why I asked that she provide them. Thank you. Um, I guess there's a few extra copies up here for anybody who um, feels the need to grab one. I can just one extra ten dollars come out. Um, and uh, Sonia, you had uh, a course, and this goes to the um, most uh, <coughs> page under where it shows capital budget. Um, and you had. Uh, explain a little bit about how that works and I wanted to make sure that people from the committee in particular, start with people from the committee, um, had an opportunity to ask further questions about that because um, I want to make sure that uh, there's as much understanding of how the capital budget piece works as possible and um, so uh, I wanted to read the questions from the committee uh, <coughs> regarding uh, funding of capital. Frankie, it would be very helpful for me if you would just briefly describe each of the lines under capital. Oh, sure. And, uh, and also, I'm curious about the um, debt ex exclusion at the 32000 service and once the debt service is paid then we consider the rest of that cash capital that we have to pay directly for the capital projects and um, so we, we basically take what we are projecting our tax levy is going to be into nine and a half percent of that. Now our, our financial policies that are in place now from the previous finance committee which I'm still going by we are um, our plan was to increase our our percentage that we put towards capital by half a percent every year until we reach 10 percent. And that was part of a bigger plan for large capital um, planning in the future. We're at 9, we're projecting 9.5 percent for fiscal year 20. I just want to caution that that could change depending on whether our budget is balanced at the end of the year or not. We might have to lower it or So when we go to the capital, let me find the right page. If you uh, the current debt, the projected debt, and the tax support, just the three on the bottom, that's all part of that tax levy calculation that I'm talking about. The um, CPA, we have we hold debt for CPA as well, but so the first line of debt exclusion that's expired. So CPA, our Community Preservation Act, we, we borrow for some of those projects as well. That money comes from the CPA funds, so that comes in, so we keep that separate. Um, same for this year, we have PEG on there, which is the Public Educational Public Educational and Government Channel. Right? <laughs> and um, last year, we the town meeting voted to authorize four hundred ten thousand, four hundred ten thousand to purchase audiovisual equipment. So we're expecting to have some debt service, even if it's just um, 
short-term interest in fiscal 20, so that's in there. The debt exclusion, that's for fiscal year 18 at 32,000. We no longer have any debt exclusions on the book right now. But we can't pay that last payment in fiscal year 18. So if we do build school in the future or the library on the debt exclusion, then it would show up here when that debt service comes into play. So the uh, current uh, amount for capital projects that's done on an annual basis will be um, ultimately a decision of the council as a whole. Um, the joint capital planning committee process will make recommendations, uh, but they are recommendations to the council so that uh, it is the council that will be making the capital decisions. And uh, I guess it's the only thing you can add at this point. And, uh, so I'm looking around to see if there are any other questions. <coughs> This is the this is from October 2018. This is the sheet that was presented to the board board meeting back in October. We didn't want to. We have a much. We keep changing it regularly, but we just felt like it's important as a public document. We we'll stick with that one until we get a chance to present it. They want to show you what potential changes are uh, changing. And we usually make a major change after this weekend. But we hope the governor makes his presentation on what state aid will be. That will be an important good piece of it. Yeah. Um, we get uh, to follow up on this morning's presentation. After the governor releases the, um, the budget, which is usually the week following the MMA meeting, maybe two weeks after this year, then immediately there's a new cherry, the first cherry sheet for FY20 is issued, which was referred to earlier. And uh, that's when you start being able to actually see numbers to boil down the policy that you will announce um, starting Friday morning uh, gets translated into real numbers that we can work with is when that cherry sheet comes out. And uh, when they come out, they um, get to us instantly because they're available to the, to the world through the uh, state uh, website. So, is there anything else on um, this topic? Because we can come back to it, but I wanted to make sure that. Yeah. Now, I'll ask you a question. Um, you've got the allocations here, and we're a part of the way through FY20. So, some of this allocation under the capital category has been spent. FY19. So we're in FY19, so, yeah. this is, so, so this is just the projection for FY19. Yeah, yeah FY19, <coughs> the, the way that fiscal years are uh, labeled by the Commonwealth, which is what we're working with, is that fiscal years uh, go from July 1st to June 30th, and they are um, labeled by the year in which they begin. It takes a little bit of uh, mental gymnastics to be used. But the year they end. The, yeah, sorry, the year end. So we're in 19, which began on July 1st and 18. We are now developing a budget for 20, uh, which I, will begin on July 1st of 19. So then if I look at the column called 19, which is our current year, and one of the issues we're about to talk about is the Station Bridge project. That's coming out current year. I think that in, uh, two of you should uh, jump in if I misstate this, but 
because we uh, town meeting voted in the spring the um, allocations for capital for FY19, um, they are already committed to projects and a lot of um, weeks this season been spent or contractually committed to. There, um, whether there's any money coming back is a matter that we need to hear about. Um, when we talk about this and we get into what's happening because we're talking about a project that would need to be funded now, it is probable, and this was in the town manager's memo to us, that we would need to take the money out of reserves, either out of uh, free cash or stabilization fund, which is the two parts of reserves, and uh, then um, we may choose as a council to um, not fund, um, to, to reduce the amount that will fund an FY20 and replenish those reserve funds. That's choices that um, we would make um, with recommendations from the town manager. I do, and there is another one which we published what the total reserves are. So you can see what the draw on the reserve fund is here. But I've seen that in another document. So, yeah, and I was yeah. just talking about where, where I look for dollars. Can you, so I have a question because I thought it'd be you know, an orientation that we were told that the money that we would use uh, was money that was actually earmarked for roads and sidewalk repair. That change. So the money that we have used today, because we've already spent some money, came out of the sidewalk account because we couldn't be contracting for the services without um, having that money. So that's when we made the decision. And currently, we're just told the principal to say, we're going to have to, instead of doing some other projects for models in the spring, we're going to use this money for the engineering services. Right. So there are two questions for the finance committee today. One is, um, can you replenish that money that we already contracted for back into the pothole account? Well, it's called pothole, pothole account. It's a short, it's a short term. And then the other one is if you want to do another project, if it's a short term bridge or, or a temporary bridge for $200,000, if you want to do that, where do you want that money to come from? If you want to do a long term to, uh, bridge, uh, the, the larger permanent bridge, do you want to commit to that or commit that to the where would that money come from? Do you want to do both one or the other? to fund the bridge. And that's um, kind of where we're starting from in the logical direction of moving. Does that make sense? Uh, so the next agenda item I just want to touch on briefly. I did, we don't have anything to end out on this today. I think that it will probably do is um, uh, we have a, uh, a bit have something available for you to look at, which I'll describe in a second, to send that to you so that you can look at it before our next meeting. And that is um, the analysis that was done and presented um, to um, a number of boards and committees, including the CPW Fire Station Study Committee and the other major boards and committees about how we could fund four major projects. And um, I think that that was done, if I get my dates correct, um, roughly around September of 17, maybe. Um, and uh, so that PowerPoint, which was uh, presented to us by Kevin um, uh who's not here anymore, uh, as a town employee, um, is, is what, reference. 
but um, I think that the question uh, everybody was asking was how do we, how are we going to fund four major projects? And there were really some several pieces of it. When you look at this sheet that we were just looking at, and the question came up about that exclusion, so it was noted that the last debt exclusion override um, was to be paid is paid off in FY18 and is done and we are, have no longer a need. That's really um, sound financial management um, that one tries uh, to uh, plan capital projects so that as you incur, uh, as you pay off debt, then you can take on new debt for new projects and you, you space to the extent you can major projects so that uh, the budget for uh, paying the debt on those particular projects gets adequately spaced over time because ultimately, it's, as you can see from these sheets, it's part of taxation. So um, <coughs> the ability to borrow, um, which doesn't necessarily all inquire that exclusion, we only have to go to a debt exclusion override if we need to um, exceed the two and a half limits. If we can build it into the budget itself, uh, we can do that so that the whole <coughs> management structure uh, is part of that. That's, again, available information for you, um, but there's just so much that's out there. I don't like uh, flooding too much paper too quickly could be as confusing as anything else. Uh, so that was that's part of it. Part of it is that um, there's been an effort that was referenced to it earlier today about building up reserves and being able to go to use reserves for some of our capital needs. Um, and that was part of a uh, very um, thoughtful um, plan as far as how to, how to do this. And then the third was the recognition that at some point we would not have enough to cover all four projects and there would be need for debt exclusion. Um, that presentation that um, uh, we can uh, send you the link to or send it to you as a uh, PDF uh, later today or tomorrow uh, sort of gives out the numbers behind that thought process and shows how it could work. But um, if I go back into the timing, that um, presentation preceded the decision to go to the voters and ask for approval of an override for the elementary school building. Um, and because that was part of those three pieces and uh, voters did pass it, but then the town meeting authorized borrowing. Um, uh, the manager uh, can speak to this, but he does have a plan, and he's told us to, to bring in, uh, I believe, with the agreement of the school committee, Mr. Mangano, to is here, um, to um, help us to develop a similar financial structure and plan. Um, Sorry, no, the, the, due to the mix up, the school committee couldn't meet last night, so they're scheduled to be on the 22nd now. This is the regional school committee and the union 26, I think it's both. So, so they will pick us up a week from last night to the 22nd. Um, so we have that in this proposal to the school committee in terms of sharing some of Mr. Mangano's time. Um, Mr. Mangano, as everyone's familiar with him, he has incredible credibility, he's really knowledgeable. There's no ramp up time. He understands all the uh, projects that are at hand. Um, our sort of vision is that during February, we will be educating the council to the vice committee and the whole council about how this, how the four projects fit together. So when the time comes in March, they start to consider a school project. We have some basis for making that uh, decision. Um, hopefully, this will, this will all work out. Boards, and, you know, there was a fifth group, and that was DPW fire. Your first week on the job. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 
Um, we, at that point, we also did not have the zero energy bylaw for municipal buildings, which affects three of the projects. Uh, and then we also did not have the half percent part, which adds to So, um, I just, for what is, yes, yeah. Uh, I just have one more question staying on, in the budget, focused on the capital budget. If I look in out years, uh, beyond 2020, uh, the debt service projection is going up, um, so that you built into this some discussion about major capital expenditures. So have you plugged in one or two projects, you know, to, to get to that, those lines? You, could, you know, one is going down from the current, so we're spending down the debt we already have, but we're taking on there. When it goes up fairly substantially <coughs> by the time we get to 2024. So just ask Andy, it looks like a few of the big projects are, in, are built into this right now. I'm not sure if it's the big projects. I'll have to go back and look at the projection okay. sheet. We can talk about that next time. I can tell you exactly what's going to happen. Because we do borrow money for various purposes. Yes, we do. Okay. Yeah, so it's a question of any big projects or is it some. There's a spreadsheet that supports that line. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Right. They just weren't for debt exclusion. They were for other. There was a preset from the previous treasurer's in there. Yeah. So I, I can I That's fine. Look at it. You can <coughs> So, I'm sure she can answer that, but there's no projections here for debt exclusion. No, I understand. So there wasn't, there's no override in here, but the debt service goes from, you know, new projected goes from 300,000 up to a million point eight, a million point seven. So we're taking on debt for something. For something. This may not be a question, but not the major projects. Yeah. Um, so you'll get that for us. We do at times, um, you know, I'm trying to think of an example. I know that one time uh, we, we borrowed a bunch of money to do um, a lot of road work all at one time and to sort of uh, create a bump for, the, for uh, some of the road reconstruction. And, uh, that was then borrowed, did not require an override, it only required a town meeting vote. It's the kind of thing the council will be able to vote in the future. Um, as we move now in the direction of getting more specifically into the bridge and um, um, in how it would be funded, to the extent that we take money from reserves um, to you know, to some extent, um, that is money that would have been counted in towards the um, amounts of site capital projects and uh, the, the four large capital projects that we've talked about. Um, so it just, uh, it, it, it does tie together and I just wanted, because you're our, you're our finance committee, I want to help help you to focus on that piece. So, the questions. <coughs> the reserves are shown on this sheet. No. Uh, the reserves are not shown on this sheet. Uh, Just so far, we aren't using the reserves to balance the budget. So that's not the reason to show up in here on other findings and sources. Mm -hmm. um, now for fiscal year 19, if we use um, reserves, the fiscal year 19 column would change because we would add whatever we're incorporating, would add it to the budget, and then the funding source would add it in the reserve or whatever we decide is going to be the funding source. But the tax rate has been set for fiscal year 19, so it has to be uh, funds that are existing in the bank to pay for this or borrow. Um, just to so our committee knows where to look for that information in the meantime, it's in the finance committee report. I'm not sure if it's in the uh, uh, 
um, budget book, it's the, um, the town manager budget book. Um, do you, I, I can tell you the 41% is The uh, our reserves is on about 12.5 million, and 3.1 of that is free cash, which means free cash is really not free; it has to be reserved by every year. So that number could change. There's a calculation that the state does for that. Um, stabilization fund is is what we say it is. It doesn't close out here. or four is listed on the agenda. I, otherwise we can move down. Okay, um, <coughs> since there's no request, uh, the next topic uh, that's listed on the agenda is criteria for consideration of station roads temporary bridge funding. Uh, I think that was also a question that was, you raised at the meeting earlier a little bit this morning. Uh, I think I had one question that was town manager and the superintendent of public works and uh, If this was put in the context of other needs that you've identified around the community, to so if we were just, if, if you were said, you know, hundred seventy, two hundred thousand dollars was available for a project. And this was not named as the project, but we have that amount of money. Are there other things that we might be considering or that you might be recommending? Sure. Are you saying other road projects or other yeah. projects in the town? Could be either, I think. Well, we know we have a backlog of road repairs and sidewalk repairs and construction of Mexican. There are other Road designated projects like the traffic light and the traffic situation in North Amherst, uh, the, the center of the road, on the Q road intersection, we had applied for funding from the state for the infrastructure we did not get. Um, well, mostly we had $200,000. We there are projects we have going on now. Different maybe than a survey to do a sidewalk where it's 
We would also look at long range. So we say that a schedule for this bridge, and if the council decides to stick to the schedule, you'll have a permanent bridge by the end of August of 2020. So we would also look at that type of thing. If for some reason you decide not to stay on that schedule, that you're gonna say we're not gonna do this bridge unless the state pays for it. Um, then you're pushing the schedule for the permanent bridge farther out. So then you have implications, other implications on the temporary bridge. If you don't do a temporary bridge, then the detour stays in place longer. If you do do a temporary bridge, you create some type of <laughs> easing of the issue until state funds do become available. So those are the things you have to think about, we would think about as well. Do we have, have we guaranteed money to do the schedule if we put down? So that would, we would look at that as well. So let me ask a couple of questions on that. One is uh, <coughs> the temporary, uh, what, when, when does the state make the decision about whether it's going to fund the permanent bridge? And um, because I don't, you know, I, we were asked to look at temporary bridge, we were asked to look at permanent bridge. But, so is there a risk that it won't be funded in time to do by 2020 with state funding? Uh, the answer to that is yes. It's always yes. Give um, the state guarantee you money, they will always give it to you. Um, we can give money by the state before it's there at least to us for road projects and for other things. So the state's the state. Uh, Mass DOT has not set a schedule yet for this round of bridge funding. Talking to them about it, and it keeps on there. Get back to me. Um, I hope we'll have something a little more firm by your next meeting, whether where this program is going for this cycle. But I don't have it right now. One of the questions that we talked about during your presentation at our council meeting was whether by moving aggressively on the permanent bridge, um, but not doing the temporary, could we move the timeline up? Given state money, et cetera, et cetera, is there a way that we could be short to get the permanent bridge? So we shorten the temp we don't do the temporary bridge, we shorten things up. We've looked at that. We have the schedule we have is very, very aggressive. It is very aggressive. That's all I can say. We tried to figure out what we would gain if we didn't do a temporary bridge. And we may gain a month at the most. That would all be all we would gain. Construction of a permanent bridge, and we just put aside a temporary bridge and didn't do it at all. <clears throat> so we're not seeing much of a gain by doing anything that way. Um, so, if, is there a period of time during the construction project that I'm trying to recall your presentation? Or when, if we did the temporary bridge where we would have to take the temporary bridge out of use and there would be no bridge again during that? The schedule we have actually has a temporary bridge coming out as when we start construction on the permanent bridge. And even though the consultant is looking at possibly leaving it in place, uh, if you leave it in place, your construction schedule for the permanent bridge is going to go out far than August of 2020. So the way it's set up now in our schedule and our scope of attacking this is that when we start the permanent bridge, we take the temporary bridge out, we close the road, we have no interruptions to the, sub, to the construction cycle, it's all construction, and then it's not coming years forward. And how long would the road be closed again? <laughs> so are you looking at it to be closed from about March, April, depending on the weather so the season? I don't know how the season changes on us, so when it's completed, we're shooting for our end of August, end of August. What is the disadvantage of leaving the temporary bridge, even if it extends the time of, because we still have traffic, so even if the permanent is pushed forward, we still can move through? So the issue is, uh, the issue is you have to accommodate people who want to use the temporary bridge. The roadway is only 50 feet wide, so you're going to try to build a bridge, which is probably 32 feet to 34 feet wide. 
and when you're told to handle that, that travel on your cars go up and down the road. So you will have to just accommodate that. There's going to be times when construction will stop because there's cars in the way. There'll be times when commuters will be stopped because construction will be in the way. Um, trying to balance that out. I mean, everyone's driven through a, a deep a project work zone the interstate. And when a lane's closed and it's only one lane, it gets a little slower, it gets a little more inconvenient. It's also inconvenient to sort of for the construction contractors working. So those are the trade-offs. Temporary bridge at the bridge you say could be used for other projects and it could be a long-term investment for making. Is there other projects or other bridges that are also the locations? Depends on what we have for we'll the temporary bridge. So could we um, try to narrow down the criteria, like looking at the other temporary other bridges that are susceptible to bring down and keeping that criteria, maybe it could be a little bit more, but then it's a long-term investment and we can utilize the same bridge and other you can do that, but as you do things like that, you put more restrictions on the contractor, it would require more time for the contractor to respond and actually prepare what he's doing for temporary bridge. So you move the dates for completion of the temporary bridge farther out. Right now, the estimate of when the time, if we decided on the 28th of January to do a temporary bridge, when would it be? This is the presentation that we gave to the slot to the council. Right, so it's on the it's on the website. There's some updates in the schedule, but you see on this the for a great schedule. This is the big one. So we're looking at having the temporary bridge in by the later part of April 417. Does that affect our chances of giving state bridge money? Uh, I don't think it does. You're going to have to appropriate the money anyhow from the town's funds because this is a reimbursement type program. So the, the finance committee and the council is going to have to vote money for the bridge and then get reimbursed for it. And that's kind of how these programs work. There'll have to be some type of action by you anyhow to say you don't put the money down. So, uh, the fact that the council has made that decision prior to their making their decision is not a factor in their yeah. decision. Yeah, thank you. That, that was my question. Because um, with all the uncertainties, if we keep delaying things to find out if we're going to get money, then the whole thing just goes on and on and on. But if we say we're going to make the commitment, spend the money and build it to the permanent bridge, not doing the temporary bridge, but build a permanent bridge with likely reimbursement, but not guaranteed reimbursement, I think we would end up with uh, by saving a lot of money and maybe moving faster. 
getting in place. Is that, this is, I made a statement, I really shouldn't make any question, I'll stand up and It keeps the bridge project moving and we're on the schedule we're on, yes.
the library thing that needs to be done, and that would be done regardless. But we're looking at a complete redesign of an intersection that, when we get done, may not have a traffic light. So I don't think spending money on traffic lights in North Amherst as being getting to our permanent solution, if you will. So I, I don't know how to say that in a criteria way, uh, but there, for, for me, some of a decision to spend money um, is, is this getting us to our permanent solution or is it just the band -Aid? Um, so, the way I, I just want to reframe this a little bit, and the reason we made, or I made the decision early on to move forward aggressively and take money from another account to move this project forward uh, in September, we decided fairly quickly, we had lots of, you know, there's a life school project, and we thought we'd do something quite quick, and then the state stepped in and said, well, no, no, we have all the rules, and so that's to this point. I think of it akin to, um, should, not to, should we repair the North Amherst intersection, but if that traffic light fell down, mm -hmm. would we say, oh, nothing we can do about it, or would we, we would have a decision then saying, put the, just restring it up, put it up, it still doesn't work so well, or do we fix it permanently, which just cost a lot more money, and just, so, so I think of this as being, we're putting that traffic light back up, and sort of because it's not even as good as it was before, and so that's what a temporary bridge would do for the, for this. I wouldn't recommend this on every street, on any, any bridge that depends on the, the traffic flow. And I think, you know, cases per day, I think so much, uh, there's a fair amount of traffic flow on station that, that, that uh, argues for some kind of passageway. I would also say it's fiscally responsible. Whatever we can get the state to fund something, we should. It's a decision I've taken on school projects, on any of the library projects, on every project. If the state has a program to fund a project account, it should work really hard to get the state to, to step up and pay that, that, that amount. So I think that I would not be advocating for aggressive permanent bridge replacement unless we get state funding to you know, give us some time to, to work that through. So I wouldn't say, and let's just keep spending money on the permanent replacement, I'd say let's work through the state first before we think that's fiscally responsible. And, but at least you've got the bridge open for minimal traffic, it's still it's still a headache to people who are it still have limitations in terms of what types of vehicles we cross it. But it's at least it's open for for pedestrian or pedestrian or vehicular uh, sort of passenger vehicular traffic. So that's where that's why we advance this to the council for your consideration at this moment. Could you review for us the regarding could you review for us um, the restrictions for vehicles that will be able to go over the temporary So, but we're kind of at this point where we're saying anything that's uh, 14,000 pounds and wider to go across the bridge, that actually covers our ambulances. So our, our ambulances, believe it or not, are around 12, 13,000. So 14,000. Um, so that means pickup trucks, that means um, no roll-off trucks, no dump truck, large dump trucks, uh, no school buses, uh, those can't go on it, but you can have a pickup truck. If you have a trailer, you can't have a long trailer, you can be able to have a short trailer, no more than 15 feet probably, or 20 and 20, most trucks about 20 feet, but it's kind of a trailer, you can be able to go through there. But that's kind of what we have the research on it. So there's a weight restriction on it and then there's going to be a weight restriction because of the way the bridge is out of the angle. So the argument about ambulance equipment, obviously most fire equipment cannot go that way. Most of it arrives to that area of town by the not grass. Um, but it leaves that area particularly ambulance by the station road because it's going on to other hospitals? It gives it the opportunity to take whichever road road it wants to out. And actually, if you have an ambulance which is doing a, uh, like a um, fire uh, smoke alarm or fire alarm disinfection somewhere, and they're in the south end of town and you get called to this east end of town, 
in the news effort to get there instead of going up and around, which is rare most of the conversation. Um, so it, it does give a lot more flexibility to meeting and responding during certain times of the day. I have a question about the monitoring of this. When you, you set these rules for it as to who can safely cross, but there's no one there to say you can't come through. Um, so I just see, uh, uh, you, you told me the bridge has this funny uh, bend in it. It's, it's one lane, it's narrow, it's not lit. It just doesn't seem safe to me. Well, anybody who doesn't fit is going to find out very quickly they don't fit. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be there doing what? <laughs> How deep is the water? I guess that's what the question. <laughs> <laughs> Normal depth under the bridge is about four feet. It might be a little deeper as you get away from the bridge, but it seems that the channel they, they measure under the bridge is four feet. Um, that's when it's about three feet below the top of the bridge. That's normal plumbing. Sure. Just to reiterate, the trends of the Essentially, you have an emergency room wheels, and whatever's going to happen is going to happen probably because of what we had in the emergency room. Um, I don't, I don't we, no, we're, 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 I'm sorry, I shouldn't yeah. acknowledge yeah. it. No. You can't do a stent in the middle. So, 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 one of the things I think about is right, so we don't have any current traffic counts. We did a traffic count back in 2004, four, three or four. And the traffic count station room at that time was about a thousand people. Yeah, and since the Amherst Hills is built another neighborhood, then it's like. Although Amherst Hills is closer to Route 9 than. Oh, no, I think I'm looking for that. Yeah. Representing the Amherst Hills, if we go to uh, the Munson Library with that, we go to uh, the Atkins, we go through uh, North Hampton, through the station road and Bay Road. So a lot of and people who are working there to the hospital. We don't have the number. So we don't have the number. There's, there's not, only, only Amherst Hills is the only development that's coming in. That's why well, it seems like a lot of houses. It's not really that many more houses. So if it's we're up to 1,100 entrance a day, that's probably where we're at. Yeah. Um, I guess I didn't understand something that you said, uh, Sparkman, and that was that uh, when you brought up the point about we always go after recommend going after state money with, or outside funds when it's available and uh, I didn't think that any of our discussion was leading in the direction of, of designing this so that we don't do that but even if we didn't do a temporary bridge and advance the question that came up earlier about advancing if we advance the money to be as aggressive as possible in Bridge by paying for it ourselves. So, have we, where have we risked it? My understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, is that we, the bridge replaced the reimbursement program only once they grant you money. That's when they will start reimbursing. So, anything that we spend in advance of that grant doesn't count for the reimbursement. Is that actually right? So, if we spend money in advance, they won't get reimbursed. So, in a scenario where State doesn't act as fast. It would be very important to get a sense of that. The temporary bridge could end up being in place a lot longer if we insist on waiting on the state. And it's a question of not receiving the state money, but 
written in the state money where you spend that is not well, written. As you pointed out, sometimes they quote commit but don't pay. What's what when they say a contract and they find it, but they, we've had projects where they put money in the budget and said we're going to allocate this much to you but then it's not released in the contract. Once they release it in the contract and we sign the contract and they sign the contract, that's the date in which they will reimburse from that day forward. There are many capital projects on the books at the state level that have never gotten that money. Yeah. I think there are two actions before. One is to reimburse the money into the local government model and the other is to allocate funds for a temporary bridge. Those are the two questions to you uh, today or I think that in terms of, but you can't make a decision on the 200,000 unless you have a context of what you're going to do for the permanent. Thing. But at some point, you have to replace that bridge permanent. That's a good thing. It's just a matter of when it's done. You say, well, we're going to have to do the overall capital plan. We're going to wait for state funding. Or we're going to just move ahead and get it done as quickly as possible. Those are places. The one, the one thing that I wanted to just clarify, because I think there's a little bit of something, uh, you said something uh, that I didn't understand. It wasn't my record, uh, understanding of the North Amherst project. There are two pieces that were in the MassWorks grant, really. One is the traffic light replacement at the intersection with Meadow Street, and then the other was to uh, re align the street north of the library to go through the land we purchased from the um, uh, former service station and uh, the inter what intersection work has to be done to make that happen. And so if MassWorks had funded us, we would have been able to do them both. Um, but the, the traffic light was going to happen anyway so that if Place the traffic light earlier, it's just one piece less that we would be going okay. back to Mass Works for. Um, it, uh, the reason it comes up for people who are familiar with the intersection is that uh, if you're not familiar with the intersection, when you are uh, particularly coming eastbound from uh, Route 116 towards that intersection, because there's a lot of traffic that wants to turn left and there's only one lane. Um, the backup can be uh, as long as 20 minutes to, uh, because you're going through multiple light cycles because people are hung up to make that left turn because we haven't been able to install the narrow because the traffic light mechanism is just so antiquated. Am I stating that correctly? And so that's, um, so if you're saying 20 minutes a day of additional travel time because of the loss of the temporary bridge, uh, the analogy is that people who use that intersection we're describing, if they use it at peak times, have been losing approximately, approximately the same amount of time um, on their trips through there for a long period of time, and now it's projected to go for a long period of time forward as we did the mass works grant for this year. So I was going to ask the last question is what's up with the mass works grant's resubmission. So, so the North Amherst intersection, I'll just give you guys an overview of the whole project since it's coming up a lot. Um, I started working here in 2002. 2003, I was called into the finance director's office and said, look, we have to do something for the intersection. This is a major issue. Um, so we've been doing many small things with this intersection over time. Uh, right now where we are is we've actually have a design for the Pine Meadow North Pleasant Street part of the intersection. And we have conceptual designs for the realignment of Sunderland Road and Road. Uh, what has happened is that the Transportation Advisory Committee Said we should look at these over holistically and overall as one intersection. It's considered one intersection by the state in the current alignment. 
So we did that, and we everyone agreed to it because we realized if we keep going the state route, and we either get a mass works grant or we put in money on the transportation improvement plan, which is the state funded process, we're going to have to have the intersection analysis done to show we chose the right analysis. So at this point, all the con all the all the concepts are being modeled by our consultant. Uh, they're modeling two roundabouts. They're modeling a roundabout and then signalized intersection. Signalized intersection roundabout. They're modeling signalized with no left turn lane. Signalized with the turn lane. They're, they're modeling all the concepts for that. And sometime in, in the February, we'll have the results of that, and then we'll know which way to go. And then we'll be at a point whether or not we get mass force money or we use a little bit of money, we can start making instrument, incremental changes to the intersections. Um, but we're kind of, as you, if you want to do an analogy, we're kind of at the point where we are at the bridges. We did the environmental, sur environmental work, the surveying, we're doing analysis, we're kind of doing analysis on the bridges now too. So we, we kind of follow the same process as we go along. The intersection of our cameras is just taking a little longer. We had the outage of the traffic light a few months back. Well, we did the exact same thing we kind of talked about here. Um, we bought a $13,000 controller, put it in. Um, if, you, if you look at the intersection, they've got these two big boxes that are like hooked together funny. Well, they are funny because they're not put together correctly. But the intersection works now. And when we decide what we're going to do with the intersection, we can take that $13,000 box and put it someplace else and use it someplace else. We can use a spare or upgrade something else. So that's what that intersection is now. And probably when we start talking more capital stuff for 2021, you're going to see that intersection popping up more. So I have to excuse myself that I didn't speak. Yeah. But again, I would say, look, we're just at that sort of the kit, the temporary box is akin to a temporary bridge. And so you could make an argument that if that box had cost $130,000 instead of $13,000, we would have been here asking you for the funds because we needed to get that intersection operational. So that's why I think the question of doing a temporary bridge, but not making promises to move forward on the permanent bridge until we get that's, that's my recommendation to you. Thank you. So just to clarify, um, so have we resubmitted the mass works proposal? For our camera? No, because the We're waiting for, for the study. Well, no, the window for the application process is until like uh, August or September. Yeah, if you're going to say you weren't going to, if you were really going to say you're not going to fund a temporary bridge because you want to put it over here with, you want to go over here and put in traffic lights in North Amherst, I would say, well, I don't have a plan for you to put those right. traffic signals in. Yes. It's just two ends of town having problems. Okay, so um, I just want to go with the committee just one last time to make sure we have the uh, criteria list at least 10. But where, where we are now down in the, um, I would propose at that point, once we've identified the criteria, so that's before everybody here, that that be the time to uh, then open it up to the public, and would that be a agreeable process? So uh, we talked about public safety, we talked about added time and added miles um, that people are incurring because of the problem. We talked about effect on businesses, and um, we talked about the environmental, if there are environmental effects. Were there other trade-offs for the other projects? So that has been a lot of discussion we've just been having. Right. Anything else? also the issue of safety to people traveling over a one-lane bridge or no bridge at all. Yes, I think you said your plan was not to have lights there on the temporary bridge. 
I mean, to, to my mind, you would need lights. The, the consultant has chosen to have a stop sign control bridge, not a traffic signal control. Yes. I'm not sure that's going to make it very far. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I just think of coming to a place where it's a temporary bridge and it's night and it's dark. It's just, to me, that's not safe. So I would suggest that it might cost more safety costs. And what I would worry about is that uh, the length of the trucks is self-regulating once they mess up. It's like once, you, once the truck messes up going under a bridge on uh, East Street, they don't make that mistake twice, hopefully. But somebody who's successfully gotten their dump truck across there with the, the, that exceeds the weight, it's, that would tempt them to do it again. Dump trucks are not gonna dump, 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 dump trucks. There's not a dump truck guy you can take across there. So most of those guys, those, those companies, will probably not do it. It's gonna probably be the pickup truck that has a trailer that's a little longer than it should be. They're gonna be the ones who really get jammed up in that temporary bridge. And then who pays for They're extracting them and the repair? Their insurance company. So, uh, criteria list would be too. So, uh, I guess at this point, I, I appreciate the patience that all of you have uh, shown. Um, I wanted to make sure that we had the criteria list down and had some discussion to frame the comments, but we certainly um, uh, do have a policy of public comments and so that's where we are. How many people would like to speak? Just raise your hands so I can get an idea. Okay, so about four, so about you know, three, three minutes or so. Um, and uh, so we start right back. It's the same thing as we do in regular. Yeah. And we, we, may, we will not be engaging in comment, I guess, back from the committee, but we do want to hear from you. Thank you so much. Um, to me, there's basically uh, two sort of major topics. One is, as I was saying, uh, brought to put a safety issue. And the safety issue is I talked to uh, a board member of the Cooley Dixon Hospital. And what she told me is very true, which is every minute makes a difference in life and death when you have a cardiac issue. And although the ambulances have all this equipment on, they are not equipped to do stents in an ambulance. And a lot of people in the ambulance woods, ambulance hills, are like us. We're old. <laughs> and being old, we're more likely to have a heart attack. If it takes 10 more minutes to get the cooling, it's a good chance I'll be dead. And that's really a very, very major concern. The other safety concern, which no one mentioned, you know, about Southeast, you know, what happens now, and I feel terrible for the people who live on Stanley Road, is what people in Amherst Woods are doing, the Amherst Hills are doing. They're going down Route 9 and taking the left in the Stanley. And Stanley is a nice little community, has ball fields. I little kids running around playing in the street and so on. A lot of people are zipping through there. I saw a couple of police cars station down there to try and control it. There's a dangerous area. Then we get out there, go under Southeast Street. Is there a really big uh, bridge there on Southeast Street, the railroad bridge there, how tight it is? So if you have a, a pickup, two pickup trucks can't go by side by side. It's too dangerous. So you're at night, you have a snowstorm, you have an ice storm, it's dark, as you were talking about. The people are zipping through there, there's going to be an accident. There's going to be a lot of access. And the more you put off a temporary bridge, the more likely you want to have access. And then you're going to get some lawyer, somewhere or other, who's going to say, you know what? You got this access because the town didn't act to fix that bridge. It's been a year and a half that had to fix that bridge. So that, to me, is a major bucket. The second one is small businesses. I have a small business. You've got uh, lots of little guys. You don't have to come here, but you're busy. You got, you know, they're doing landscaping. They're cutting down trees. They're doing all this little stuff, which they have a temporary bridge, they can take to pick up a truck across and go back and forth. Cities can deliver pizza hot rather than cold. And there's a lot of, a lot of small businesses, so it makes a lot of sense. And the, the third thing on the finance side is, as Gilbert says, a lot of money's already been allocated and has been spent and be used for the permanent bridge as well as the temporary bridge. So I think it just makes a lot of sense to try and support the temporary bridge. Thank you. Um, 
everybody to um, state their name so that uh, because Kathy is. Yeah. Uh, My name is Chris Waldo. That's eight letters B L A U D E L T. I'm a 1985 player and I was 14. Law B L A U and Delta, most of the Law Delta. Thank you. Okay. So, Mr. Um, so I'm Martha Hanner from Minus 18 Publishing Drive, and I just uh, I want to um, underscore the safety issue, the, the hazards of having to drive around on the under the passes on Southeast Street, and there's a couple of bad left turns and so on. Uh, they're a concern. Also, on Station Road, before it was flood boost, uh, people went very slowly for that bridge and oftentimes waited for another car anyway. And so I really don't think that people would try to swim across very fast on the temporary bridge, but certainly they didn't swim across fast even on the previous bridge. But I would like to make uh, a, a very rough assessment of the environmental impact of the segment for not doing a temporary bridge. Uh, again, an estimate of how many cars use the, the bridge a day. Yeah, the oldest number was about 100. I was just saying that typically I would see two or three cars while I went that section of, of Station Road. So my estimate was two cars a minute between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., let's say, round number. So that would be about 1,400 cars a day. Uh, and then the detour uh, adds about three extra miles, I would say, roughly. And so that would be about 4,300 miles a day extra. Uh, and then if the temporary bridge is not constructed, and there's a delay of, say, at least 16 months, that would be 480 days at 4,300 miles a day would be somewhat over 2 million extra miles driven. And then if you said that Typically, uh, a vehicle driving around those secondary roads was getting 20 miles per gallon. That would be over uh, 103,000 extra gallons of fossil fuel use. So I would say that's the environmental impact statement, the pollution, the carbon dioxide, et cetera, from 2 million extra miles, <coughs> give or take, and uh, 100,000 gallons of, of fossil fuel is an impact. Also, you know, that many cars on these more secondary roads and more wear to those roads, they're going to need repairs sooner and so on. So there is an impact there. So certainly, uh, I would feel there's a lot of reasons. Also, a reserve fund, to me, means a fund to be used for as expenses that couldn't normally be anticipated. And that's what we have here for the temporary bridge. And to me, a number of you know, $170,000 would be small compared to major capital projects. And I really don't see that it should be uh, a phrase as an either or kind of uh, a proposition. Uh, thank you. Okay. Yes. Uh, my name is David Nealon. I live at 20 Indian Pipe Lane in South Amherst, Amherst Woods. Um, I've only lived there for a little while, so I'm on geography and uh, I heard something here that was a little disturbing. There's no question in my mind that we need the bridge. I don't think we even need to discuss that here, and I certainly don't see discussing safety to the Finance Committee. But I, I take it in a financial point of view. I heard a suggestion that in best case we could expect a permanent bridge by August of 20 and that would assume an adherence to pretty tight engineering schedule and a probability that we would be assured in some way of state funding. Uh, assuming that uh, schedule it was suggested that we would have the bridge removed uh, several months before the, the finish date of the bridge, which certainly makes sense to me. And so we have use of the bridge for, as I understood it, a little less than one year. Now, 
if we accepted that whole premise, it wouldn't be too difficult for you as a finance committee to suggest, well, we could rent the bridge for about a year. I understand that's an option in this arrangement. Uh, it also wouldn't be too difficult for you to come to a financial recommendation that we not even do that due to the due to the uh, competition for funds in the short duration that the bridge would be useful. Now, I think it's foolish, and we're all old enough in this room to kind of agree on this, I think, to agree that a best case scenario that depends upon construction schedule with New England weather, that depends upon state funding coming through when you expect it's going to come through. We haven't even talked about uh, conservation commission approval of all of this, and I'm sure they have a good deal to say about it that hasn't surfaced yet. I understand there's some federal engineering requirements. There's a lot of variables in here, and I think a, a best case scenario is a pretty rash assumption to make when you're making a, a financial recommendation. Now, if you went to the conclusion that rental of the bridge does make some sense because we might make the first case scenario, in which case we save a lot of money. But on the other hand, if we had the bridge rented and we didn't make all our schedules, we'd still have the, bay, the bridge rented and we could, term, we could turn that out as long as we needed it. That makes a lot of sense because that gets us a bridge which we need. And that's my premise going in and that's my, my conclusion. If we rented the bridge for an expectation of at best maybe a year, but probably more than that, and then we, we can either give it back if you want to buy it. Hey, that bridge is not unique in this country. We've got a lot of bridges, a lot of towns. I used to live in back and we had a we could have used a bridge there. We waited three years for a bridge. You can go into the bridge rental business or you can sell a thing, but it's a lot of money to buy. Rental, not so bad. Okay. Yes. Uh, Laura Christensen, I'm Philly and Mike. Um, I just wanted to agree with everything you said about the safety. Um, I've been living there for almost 18 years and using that little bridge on the station road. There's never a problem when there are two cars coming towards it, one stops, does the other one go by? In 17 years, I've never had an issue with that. Never had an issue driving it at night. Um, you mentioned that you thought there might be a safety problem if there were no lights on. Um, a, temporary. a temporary bridge. There's no, it's a, the bridge that's there is like a temporary bridge, it's small. And there's no problem. Yeah, there's no light and there's no problem. But going down, is it Southeast Street? Southeast Street, yeah. That, going under that yeah. bridge, the train tracks, that is scary. Because yeah. people go fast. They aren't used to slowing down and waiting. And it's not wide enough for two cars. If it is, you feel lucky if you make it through. But that is scary. And there are no lights there either. I, mean, I think there's a huge safety issue um, with that Southeast Street underpass. I don't know if you've ever done it. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> it, it was shot. The first time I did it, because I, I haven't done it before, because I don't drive standing out that way normally, but after the bridge went down, the first time I did it, the first time I did it, I was shocked. I, I actually was very surprised that how difficult it was when you had a car coming from both directions. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, there's a couple of people back here that say. I do, I Carol Williams. I live in I Juno Lane. Been there for four, over 40 years, and a policeman did tell me that whenever there's an emergency on I Juno Lane or Amherst Woods, uh, police will come, and usually from both directions. He, and he said to me, "Now it is a real pain because we only can come from one direction, and it's serious." I read the paper where the police said, "Well, it's no problem. We can still get there." It's, same amount of time. Well, that's nonsense. You can't. There was one other here in the back. 
Yes. Um, I also wanted to point out in terms of. Um, oh, sorry, Pat Packard from Erie on my Indian pipeline. Um, the Amber Woods has been disheveled and torn up for like a year, two years, probably at least three years. And so we've been going out one way, Station Road, and then next week we have to go out Route 9 instead. So we've been trying to navigate the roads for three years. And I think that's a consideration that we've been um, trying to maneuver and manage the roads for three years in Amherstwood. So this is another, you know, this is just another drop in the bucket that we have to figure out the, the Station Road. The other thing is there are a lot of um, houses that are for sale up in that area. And this has been an inconvenience, I think, to people. I'm not selling my home, but um, people trying to sell their homes that they can't go in and out. Um, for three years, the roads have been all torn up, so that hasn't helped um, resale or selling of homes. But now having it blocked off in one direction, I think that adds another inconvenience for people trying to sell their homes. And also the realtors. And the realtors. But um, So I just wanted to point out that we're not just looking at this one piece um, in terms of navigating the community and coming in and out of Amherst Woods, but it's been three years, and so we have to kind of put that in perspective, I think. Thank you. Hi, Amanda Walling. I live on Larkspur. Um, I would just add, several people have mentioned the the roads that people are taking as workarounds, Southeast Street, Stanley, which are not designed to have that kind of traffic and people are driving fast and create safety issues. I would also add, I think there's a few other roads that are in that same category. A lot of people have been, if, right now I think if you take um, GPS directions to get to Amherst Woods from Hadley, it'll tell you to take Mill Lane Southeast Street. Mill Lane is obviously not a great road for um, high speed traffic since half of it is unpaved. Um, I know a lot of people are also taking um, Station Road the other way down to Warren Wright. That's a very narrow, winding road, especially if weather conditions are not great. Um, it can be a little dicey, too. So I think other than just taking Route 9 through the straight through the center of town, which often has traffic backups, there's no very good route um, for a lot of traffic. That's and halt, yeah. That's not good. Well, thank you. Last time. Um, I mean, well, I appreciate the comments that we've received, and uh, uh, one thing I did want to say is that the council, in their fitness experience, and uh, uh, as a member of the select board too, uh, there's not always the perfect committee, but uh, to handle all of an issue, but we try and get a committee to spend more time with things and um, this world and finance really is not just about numbers but priorities and how we spend money enough money and uh, so it, 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 that is why our committee is here dealing with the issues so my next question to the committee is do you feel ready today to make a decision or do you want to delay until uh, the 22nd? I think that's the only year call. We reserve the, the day before we have to use it. So, I think a decision. Some people might not want to work with 
proper path, proper a bridge that has lights and whistles and bells. And some people may say, want to say, this is a bridge that just does this. And has that been gone in? No, it has not. It did not go out. Oh, I see. Thank you. Thank you. Council. Well, our biggest trend in this is the chain. Yeah. We need the, the right. council vote to take our 28. Right. And this committee needs to make a recommendation to the council before that Congress comes to be. So, um, if you'd like to say us, you started to say you I, 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 I would also like to make a decision on the then, then we have an agreement that we will. Um, at our next committee meeting, one would take the all of the service to my staff and we will not take much of the day. Anybody may have a comment. I have first names, but I didn't catch the last one. I'm just going to go around and tell you. I'm sorry, do I write your names? So I don't, so I don't make my best guess at the spelling. Here, if you want to again, I've got to send my hand to you. So is there any other business that uh, <coughs> the raise topics that I didn't do? Okay.
there's fungible in the area, it would be good if it had the cities and members on board, um, certainly by the time that we are receiving the budgets and starting to discuss the budgets that we receive. And that's a timetable question that the budget coordinating group to help us to cement that the um, library and the schools really are working with the budgets already in the timeline. Um, so if uh, we, but though town manager does not have to submit a budget, it's really previously. Let me also mention one other item that's in the charter that directly um, relates to our job, if you will, uh, but definitely relates to budget, and that is the charter requires that the town manager, or the president, calls a town forum and the town manager delivers uh, an address about the budget, you know, to presents the budget. And uh, Mr. Bachman and I are looking at dates in the first full week of March. And uh, we have made the decision that because we believe it will be a popular event that we are planning to hold it at the middle school in the evening. But I don't we need one or two dates. Weeknights, but in the evening. And if you don't fill the auditorium, at least we may be the golden so just the uh, last question that I have for Vidi is um, whether you now know of agenda items that you would like to add for our meeting on the 22nd of January. Um, and, and obviously the principal reason we're meeting is to conclude the record recommendation to the council regarding um, the issues that were presented to us, which is the two financial issues related to the bridge. Um, but if there are other things you know now or you think of within the next um, few days, uh, please send them to me and I will um, work with Kathy on it just making sure that we have an agenda that's uh, agreeable and uh, get it posted on time. And it has to be posted by this Friday. Uh, yeah, so we don't have much time, so we do have to. So when you already mentioned, Andy, just giving us a link to the presentation of the more large project earlier, just so we can see that Yeah. Yeah. So, so that would be one of the we this, and then we know we've already heard the number of the size of the ship, but just getting a sense of what this four years looking forward, we're dealing with one current steady issue that's starting to work out. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that the, uh, the reason that I wanted to do that is to see how it, so that you, uh, everybody can see how it is structured, yep. how you structure those kinds of presentations and be able to ask questions about that. Um, we're not going to have a recommendation from um, staff about um, that um, at some time yet. But and and uh, it would set us up though for the fact that we are going to talk about capital projects at our regular council meetings in um, February. And uh, it begins to also give you a sense of looking at the whole, but I do want to stress it does not include yeah. the two items we mentioned before, the zero energy bylaw, which does not apply by the way to the library, but it does, and it does not include the one half percent. But you were looking at numbers that are older rather than the That's correct. So, but but it, it lets you see this interaction of what happens to that debt service line or the need for government so we will get that to you, and then that we'll discuss it. We'll do, bring that back onto the agenda with the decision of the group. Yes. I'm just trying to understand in terms of how we decide to Thank you. 
next year's budget we're going to have an array of requests for next year's budget so we're, we're in an unusual situation and let me see that we're, within this year's budget the money was allocated already. so we're taking money away from one set of uses to another because something happened and doing, we're doing this off cycle right so it's right. it's so going to pass to come out of this year's budget but it's not in the approval process of just <coughs> but, but we're being asked to replenish the money right. to, into the fund so that uh, potholes that occur as a result of the winter so we can prepare. And so those were the two decisions that uh, I'm in to consider. The question is what additional I don't know what we have to spend on big projects. I don't really have a good understanding at this time of how we're going to do it. Meaning the big capital. Yes, even without this. So until I know that, I find it really hard to come up and make a commitment on this if there's ways to do it cheaper. Because to find out that we can't then do a school because we did a bridge this way and we could have done that way. So it's, it's the lack of having a big picture which is helping me out. I need that picture. And Ronald, I, those are probably not the real trade-off, ultimately. The reality is that the discussions that I'm hearing from particularly the school, because it seems to be the first capital project emerging, is they kind of would like to have that big picture because it, you know, may influence their conversations. We have to decide. We have a very short window on the school. We have to, as a town council, commit to something for the state to even look at what they're just submitting. So we actually, legally, we don't. But in order to present to United Front, am I correct on this? In order to present to United Front, it is highly preferred that the council would have a vote on this. Okay, just further in. Uh, my question, so of the big project plan here, and this is separate from the bottom fund. So it's not that the if we spend $170,000 out of the bottom hole, we cannot fund. Okay, I think that's right. right. Yeah, I, think, I mean, the, we cannot do the major capital projects that are being discussed in this town without doing some kind of override. Okay? We generally except for that one exception that uh, somebody mentioned. In the past, evidently, we did take out a loan, if you will, to do some oh, okay. major work. That's, although there are people who suggest we have a fifth project, and it's called $16 million worth of road and sidewalk. Can I see me Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to kind of clarify the pothole, pothole money. It's really not pothole money, it's road repair money. Yeah. And that was part of the capital um, JCPC um, plan last year, where we put almost a million dollars in to add to the road repair money only in Chapter 90. The only reason we were able to use it for this is because it was road repair money. The bridge is the road, okay. part of the road. Okay. So we were able to use that for people to do what we did in preparation for all this. Um, if we do that money last year, we wouldn't have had that money to blow on. We would have had to come back to the council and ask for a supplemental appropriation. So because it is road, they planned on using that money and planned on getting it replenished to go back into the road with the money. So there's there's boundaries that I have to follow within Mass General Law for that money. So I just want to clarify that it's part of the current law. So I think the short answer to your question is we'd like you to look at that capital plan yeah. <laughs> next time. Yes. Uh, so that, that's so the short so answer yes. and, and, and slow. Uh, just a second, Mark. Uh, uh, the other thing that you had asked was that, uh, uh, you know, 
road projects in general and prioritizing road projects in general. And uh, normally, um, that's not an issue that the um, prior finance committee would have spent time on because it would have gone through the Transportation Advisory Committee and then been a decision of the Select Board. Uh, we're kind of in a new territory because we're in a new form of government and trying to work these things out as to what our relationship as a council as a whole is with the Transportation Advisory Committee, but they are the ones who have, and feel free to speak to this a little further, if, we, um, um, if I have said it fully enough, but they have a process of looking at the competing road needs and traffic needs and prioritizing and making recommendations, um, which are based upon recommendations and information that he provides to the Transportation Advisory. So, yes. Road, re road resurfacing, road maintenance is kind of held in my department and we make that recommendation. And then on top of that, we have the project work, which is do we expand the sidewalk, do we do this traffic signal, do we do the traffic conduct somewhere, and that goes to the Transportation Advisory Committee, and they make a recommendation. And so, when you see one by the time we came to the select board, there was three recommendations. There was my input, there was the tax input on certain things, and there was the town manager's input. And then the town manager made, took that and made something to recommend to the select board, which I imagine how he's still going to the council. But there's lots of stuff to present to him when it comes. The, 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 uh, the, what the, they're still actively meeting. They voted not to make a recommendation one way or another on the particular issue that we're facing, which is the station road temporary bridge question. Um, and uh, so, uh, but for other road issues that we sort of refer to, we probably will be getting, and I expect we will be getting. Like North Amherst, so they live in North Amherst, they live in North Amherst their section three times already, and they'll look at it again, and we can back with the study, the study will go to them, and they'll look at that, and we'll make recommendation on that. So when do you, when do you expect this to be? End of February. Okay. Um, I know our time is uh, really run, but uh, did you have something to uh, Yes, just wanted to quickly say when you're considering this uh, temporary bridge, consider that the reserve fund has $12 million in it. And the purpose, as I understand it, of a reserve fund is for expenses that cannot be anticipated. Uh, we're asking for, for the temporary bridge, as I understand, approximately $170,000 that to 12 million. Um, that is one of the definitions of the reserve fund. It is also on um, plan financial, financially to, put, to build our reserves because we know we have these very large projects um, coming before us. And um, as more and more projects come online for debt, there'll be times when we won't be able to pay that debt service with any operating budget. That reserve fund will be used to to go through those years. Yeah. So let's yeah. see compare the 12 million and 170,000. Can I also just say thank you, Andy and Kathy, for stepping up for this committee? So we will. Uh, and I definitely will need people to read the minutes. Oh, yeah, wonderful comments. So I want to make sure I got them. <laughs> so we will. Uh, before we go about the um, agenda because we don't have much time so I think we've got the input from all of you. Okay. So I don't think we have any other business and that's what we can adjourn. Thank you.